Good morning and welcome to morning prayer. As you can see, I am not Pastor Chirillo again. I'm Joseph and I will be giving him breaks throughout the week because of his busy schedule on Holy Week. One other announcement is the bulletin might not be up on the website yet. And if that is the case, you can follow along in the ELW at page 298. Let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. O oh, come, let us worship and praise. Our psalm today is Psalm 1, which we will re, uh, read responsively, where I will do the odd verses and the response will be the even verses. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. A reading from Romans, the 10th chapter. The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is, the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. A reading from an Easter homily written by Melito of Sardis. We should understand, beloved, that the Paschal mystery is at once old and new, transitory and eternal, corruptible and incorruptible, mortal and immortal. In terms of the law, it is old. In terms of the word, it is new. In its figure, it is passing. In its grace, it is eternal. It is corruptible in the sacrifice of the Lamb, incorruptible in the eternal life of the Lord. It is mortal in his burial in the earth, immortal in his resurrection from the dead. The law indeed is old, but the word is new. The type is transitory, but grace is eternal. The Lamb was corruptible, but the Lord is incorruptible. He was slain as a lamb. He rose again as God. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, yet he was not a sheep. He was silent as a lamb, yet he was not a lamb. The type has passed away, the reality has come. The lamb gives place to God, 
the sheep gives place to man, and the man is Christ, who fills the whole of creation. The sacrifice of the lamb, the celebration of the Passover, and the prescriptions of the law have been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Under the old law, and still more under the new dispensation, dispensation everything pointed toward him. Both the law and the word came forth from Zion and Jerusalem. But now the law has given place to the word, the old to the new. The commandment has become grace, the type of reality. The lamb has become a son, the sheep a man, and man God. The Lord, though he was God, became man. He suffered for the sake of those who suffer. He was bound for those in bonds, condemned for the guilty, buried for those who lie in the grave. But he rose from the dead and cried aloud, Who will contend with me? Let him confront me. I have freed the condemned, brought the dead back to life, raised men from their graves, raised all from their graves. Who has anything to say against me? I, he said, am the Christ. I have destroyed death, triumphed over the enemy, trampled hell underfoot, bound the strong one, and taken all up to the heights of heaven. I am the Christ. Come then, all you nations, receive forgiveness for the sins that defile you. I am your forgiveness. I am the Passover that brings salvation. I am the Lamb who is immolated for you. I am your ransom, your life, your resurrection, your light. I am your salvation and your King. I will bring you to the heights of heaven. With my own right hand, I will raise you up, and I will show you the eternal Father. Let us continue with the Gospel Canticle. In the tender compassion of a God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. In the tender compassion of a God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Through your holy prophets you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forbearers, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. In the tender compassion of a God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare the way to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into 
the way of peace. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially, we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness. For the gifts of relationship with others. For the communion of faith in your church. For those working for a cure to this new coronavirus. For those who are working to fight this new virus as doctors, medical professionals, government officials, and all those who help. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world. Heal the hurts of all your children and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. For the people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare. For all who work for peace and international harmony. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction. For the church of Jesus Christ in every land. For those who are fighting on the front lines. For medical professionals, for janitors, and all essential workers. For the church as we evolve in new ways in response to this virus. For those who feel alone and isolated from others. O oh Lord, the Father glorified Jesus and appointed him heir to all nations. Let us praise him saying, save us Lord through your victory. Lord Christ, by your victory, you broke the power of evil and destroyed sin and death. Make us victorious over sin today. You laid death low and brought us new life. Grant that we may walk today in this new life. You gave life to the dead and led uh, humankind from death to life. Give eternal life to all those we shall meet today. You brought confusion on the guard that your tomb, but joy to your disciples. Grant the fullness of joy to all who serve you. Father, you give your church constant growth by adding new members to your family. Help us put into action in our lives the baptism we have received with faith. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. And all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as the Lord taught us. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Alleluia. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? 
Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners, and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Let us pray. O God, for our redemption, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, so that we may rise to live with Christ forever. Who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, bless us and direct our days and our deeds in peace. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. See you this evening for evening prayer.